thank you very much. 13 months ago, my uh, son's classmate, Robin Higgins, was diagnosed with something called neuroblastoma, which uh, is a rare form of aggressive childhood cancer. And all my son could, could think of was, well, how can my dad and mum help? And so we rallied together and we created a little blog. We created a Facebook group. I know Facebook's popular here. And we tweeted about things. And the problem was, was that we had to raise 300,000 uh, pounds within about eight weeks so that Robin could get on a, a plane and fly to America, which is the only place where, where she could actually be treated. And as the person in charge of, uh, well, self-volunteered in charge of um, trying to coordinate the, the digital efforts here um, and rallying support, uh, I just did what I would, would normally do and, and collaborated with as many people as possible and, and it got about 10,000 people involved actually. So I was just one small cog of a very large wheel. And uh, a few months ago, Robin had her test back from the operation. We did raise the 300,000 pounds and she's now all clear and she's gonna live. And that was when this presentation started in my head, because I'm a geek. I don't know if you can tell. I'm a, I'm a nerd, I'm a geek, and I, I'm proud. Um, I even have glasses as well, because apparently all geeks have to wear glasses. It's a strange stereotype. So, so as a technologist, which I prefer the term of, I have been looking back at what happened and thinking, was this only possible? raising a third of a million pounds by and large, was it possible because of technology? You know, we were able to tweet information that was retweeted and retweeted and retweeted to such an extent that even the BBC picked it up, it was on the homepage of the BBC, the Evening Standard, it, was, it went worldwide because of technology. So it got me thinking, what else is possible if we can do this? We have 300,000 pounds in eight weeks, nine weeks using the tools that we have in our hands. Surely we can do so much more than just that. And to cut a, a short story long, I eventually ended up with these ridiculous psychological, phil philosophical questions, such as what about if Mandela had tweeted? And that's how we get to where we are today, <laughs> rather circuitously. Um, th it's not to do with Twitter that I'm fascinated with. It's not necessarily to do with, with Nelson Mandela who I have a private passion for, but that's not really the point. The point is, if the people who have changed the world and had a, a massive difference actually had the tools and technologies in their hands that we do today, what else could have taken place? You know, some people who have changed the world for millions of people, rather than just for one person. Of course, through the eyes of Robin, her world was fundamentally changed. She had a life or death, and she has a life which is as much of a change of world as anyone could possibly have. So then I started thinking, well, what about if da Vinci had Photoshop? <laughs> oh, bear with me. It's just starting to wonder how the tools that we have now so readily available would actually impact the people that have made fundamental difference. Um, what about if Einstein had Google? What would, it, what would that mean? How, how would that actually have changed the work that he did? What if Ernesto Che Guevara had had mobile? All he had was Radio Rebelde, Radio Rebel. What about if all of his troops in his guerrilla war that took down the Batista with Fidel Castro had actually been armed with weapons of mass communication rather than mass destruction? And believe me, this, the more you start thinking about this, the more you get caught up in this kind of thing. And it's, it's produced many sleepless nights, as, uh, as anyone who knows me will, will tell. But maybe it's actually the fact that the Vitruvian man is geometrically perfect anyway, so therefore it doesn't matter that da Vinci didn't have Photoshop. Um, it's arguable that E equals MC squared is actually the, alternate, the, the ultimate answer. Therefore, what would Google have done for him? Computers are only as good as the data that we put into them, after all. And finally, with someone like Che Guevara, who knows? I wouldn't go as far as to say who cares, 
but there's a limited, limited amount of time that you can think about these things until your brain starts hurting, or well, in my case anyway, because there's not much to hurt. But it's something which I've been amazed by when you start thinking about the tools that we have today, what we can actually do. So to answer this question, is it the tools? Is it what's in our hands? Or is it what's in our hearts that actually makes those differences? With Robin Higgins, the tools for sure helped. But looking at the seven characteristics of the people that change the world, and, and by the way, the more you read up about people who change the world and how, there's writing all over the place. There's, you know, you can find 11 characteristics, 20 characteristics. You've got Covey's seven habits of highly effective people. There's lots of writing, etc., etc., etc. But actually, the ones that I have found the most resonant is that sometimes to change the world, you just have to be a genius. That's quite handy. Um, I wouldn't know, of course. The second one is the absolute conviction of belief, as shown by MLK. The third, shown by someone like Tim Berners-Lee, the imagination of seeing something that any, any sane person would have found absolutely improbable, or arguably impossible. The passion of the Wright brothers. The Wright brothers who were in competition with a certain gentleman from the Smithsonian Institute to be the first people to have a flying machine. He was funded, the guy from the Smithsonian Institute, was funded with grants from kings and princes, and he very much wanted to win. He very much wanted to be the first person. The Wright brothers, who actually eventually became the first, the day afterwards, the guy from the Smithsonian Institute cancelled his project. You think, why would he cancel his project? The thing was is that he didn't want to fly, he wanted to win. The Wright brothers wanted to fly. The persistence of someone like Churchill, especially on this day of all. And for those watching us on video, this is Remembrance Day, so hence the poppies. The compassion of someone like Gandhi. How many tools did he have? How many Facebook accounts, how many Facebook likes did he receive? Eh? So when I started looking at these things, I started thinking to myself, hold on a minute, these guys didn't have any tools. You've got the odd radio station here and there, and a, a chalkboard and some chalk. And finally, out of my seven anyway, with no disrespect to Neil and Buzz, the first people on the, on the moon, this guy here, the stones of someone like Yuri Gagarin, the first man into space. Of course, landing on the moon is when the awards were handed out, but the bravery that's needed to act in these ways of changing the world is something which isn't related in any way to necessarily using the modern tools of technologies. So, Looking at what we have today, these tools, are they actually irrelevant? We look at something like Barack Obama's first campaign, not reflecting his, his most recent results, but the init initial campaign that got him into the White House is unarguably a way of using modern technology to connect multiple hearts his case across middle America, people who had never necessarily felt represented before, using common tools and technologies for donations and for news bulletins, etc., for urging people on to go and actually vote. So in this instance here, the tools really did help. The tools also can increase the speed of emotion with the Haiti earthquake appeal, ushahidi.com, a site where people can pledge support and it's very sad to hear the most recent uh, events in Haiti but Ushahidi's efforts or their tools their technologies that actually sped up the ability for people to emote and support is unarguable the tools helped that unendedly and finally the magnification of feeling like we see from how the world's AIDS day is actually able to use the emotions not just as a physical manifestation as the bow, but also throughout the tools, platforms and channels 
the Facebooks, the Twitters. This is something which is magnifying the feeling, not just from the transmitter, i.e. the world's AIDS day and the foundation, but the receptor as well, which is us, who then become transmitters onto other receptors, who become more transmitters onto other receptors. So the t technologies aren't so vitally important. But from the seven characteristics that I showed, not one of them was called Facebook or Google. So I went round and round and round, and I spoke to lots of people about it and, and, and got myself in a bit of a pickle. And eventually you end up back with the question, so what if Mandela had tweeted? What if he, had able, he was able to smuggle a a phone into a cell and somehow mobilize his group. What if that had happened? Would, would it be the case that he had be released earlier because of the pressure from the crowds? If you look into how the Berlin Wall fell, it started with one person protesting. The tipping point with that was actually when there were more people protesting than was possibly able to police. So the power of citizens is immense, if mobilized. Maybe what would have happened with Mandela is that the messaging from inside his cell, which could only really be transported via writings at much later dates, would actually have changed the minds of people around the world to stop apartheid much earlier. So, the question, is it more to do with what's in our hands, or is it more to do with what's in our hearts? How important is what is in our hands in relation to the importance of what is in our hearts? And this has confused the hell out of me for a year. And I think I have the answer, and it's a really simple one. And I think the answer is this. It doesn't really matter what's in your hands unless it's in your heart. I don't believe that you can use the tools in the most effective, powerful way unless it's in your heart. The people that submitted fundraising ideas on the robinhiggins.com website were offering to give away their entire salaries Children saying, I don't want any presents, please use the money to donate. It wasn't the technology that did it. It was what was in people's hearts that did it. We just had the technology to transfer that emotion, to magnify that feeling, to connect the multiple hearts in the best way. And as we move forward, you guys are half my age, lucky group. <laughs> When you're my age, when you're my age, think about the stuff you're going to have. We've just started with augmented reality, virtualization of all physical. Think about what you can do. Think about how, if it's in your heart, actually, things that are absolutely outrageous, raising a third of a million quid in eight weeks for some girl in a school in the middle of nowhere where I live. How yeah, all of this is possible. Someone in your family is ill, something needs to be changed on the roads, a road, new road system, a law needs to be changed. We can do this now. We have the tools, but we need to have first what's in our heart. And that is the end of, I must admit, a very long story in my heart that I finally feel as if I've resolved on this stage. I'd like to thank you for your patience, and I'd like to... Wish you all the best in changing the world in whichever way you see fit. Namaste.